Hey guys, today's little project is a high performance stereo phono preamp. And I will admit that I did not design this circuit myself. I got it off of Rod Elliott's Elliott Sound Product website, ESP. And here is a schematic of one channel right there. Just go to his website if you want to get the, you know, a clean schematic of it. The ESP site is, in my opinion, the best do-it-yourself audio site there is. Rod cuts through all the audio foolery and BS, gets right down to practical, excellent performing circuits. Highly recommend checking out his site. If you read it, you do have to know a little bit, you know, you have to know some things going in, but it's just a, a very good site. But anyhow, I copied it and built it out here on the breadboard. I'm using a quad op amp instead of separate ones because I had a TL-074 in my uh, box. Normally I wouldn't use the TL-0 series in high performance audio. They just have a high noise figure. They're, they're not that good. There's much better chips. Only one I have, so, you know, I'm going to use it. Of course, if I was really going to build this thing, I would lay it out better. You, you can only do so much on these socket boards. I'd use metal film cap or uh, metal film resistors and better caps and you know all that good stuff. But this is just for playing around. Just want to build this phono preamp stage and test it out, uh, give it a listen, and uh, you know see if it's something uh, I might want to build. I wanted to actually build a phono preamp at some point and and uh, go with this high performance circuit. So why do we need a phono preamp anyway? Well, there's a couple reasons. For one, the signal coming off of the phono cartridge is very weak, and to get it up to line level, it needs amplification. Number two, for a multitude of reasons, there is a curve applied to the frequency response. It's not flat off the record, and there's uh, multitude of reasons why they do that and I'm not going to explain everything in the video you know that's a, a 30 minute subject on its own but uh, one thing I will mention with the magnetic cartridges is you know pretend this is a coil and this is a magnet well if you move a magnet in front of this coil like this at a high rate you'll generate a certain voltage. Now at a lower frequency same amplitude of movement the magnets moving slower is going to produce a much lower voltage. Now watch as I move the pencil across the point that this line crosses under the pencil you can see how it it moves slowly and then at the higher frequency it jumps really fast. So that's the, the sine wave versus time here. The waveform versus time. So if that magnet moves slow and less voltage is generated in the coil you're going to get an uneven response anyway. And they could compensate by making the grooves larger for low frequency. And here's kind of my sketch of record grooves. You have, you can see higher frequencies riding in a lower frequency wave. Well, you could compensate by making the lower frequency larger, but the problem is it takes a lot of space up and you can put less grooves on the record less playing time so that's not a good solution plus that's really hard on the cartridge to follow that big wide signal and you know it's 
harder for the stylus to stay in that groove. So what they do is instead of you know making the groove large like this, they make the groove smaller like this one here and they add equalization. So using equalization takes care of those issues. They can use that smaller groove and use the equalization on the amplification and you get your nice flat or what should be flat frequency response when it enters the main amplifier. Now like I said my explanation is kind of an oversimplification. There's a there's more to it. There's you know different turnover frequencies and you know it's not just a flat curve. It kind of has flat spots in it. And this is normally it'd be more of a curved line instead of these plateaus, but this book is a 1954 hi-fi manual. And you can see all the different curves they're using showing here. There's uh, the lower frequency end and high frequency ends. The different record companies used their own standards. Your phono preamp had switches for the low frequency and high frequency and you had to set them for whatever you know company's record you were playing. Here's all of the uh, different record companies and their uh, turnover points, record speeds, a lot of different standards. Kind of getting in the sunlight there. But they finally, oh here's a uh, General Electric Phono Preamp. various phono preamps yeah, consider that well thankfully they standardize it so you can use one circuit with the uh, 33 LPs and the uh, 45s so what I'm going to do now is hook the circuit up and uh, we'll just take a look by injecting a waveform and taking a look on the scope how the frequency response is okay empowering it with 9 volt batteries one for the positive rail one for the negative side and to have the function generator hooked up and testing one channel now I do seem to have one problem number one well, the camera just focused. Well, number two, it's jumping around. So I think it's picking up AC. Though you can't, or the uh, AC noise. But you can see as the frequency gets lower, the amplitude really jumps up. In fact, it starts to clip. But let me see if I can fix that problem. It's a very sensitive high impedance circuit, so it's liable to pick up some noise unless it's put into a shielded case. Well there it is my aluminum foil shielding connected to earth ground. My house doesn't have grounds on the AC outlets well some of the older ones because of its age 1942 I guess after the war they started putting in uh, the safety grounds but anyhow, I ran this to my furnace, I clipped it onto the metal, which is grounded. But it didn't help that much. I did lower the impedance of the input because I know some of the noise is coming in on the wires there. And because of the gain, I'm just not going to get rid of all of it. But anyway, you can see as I increase the frequency, the amplitude drops. As I lower the frequency, it really goes up. It starts to clip even. Looks like my negative battery is probably a little bit weaker. These are 
used batteries but you can see the effect of the base boost I'm not actually going to check the levels because uh, I didn't have some of the exact components and there's a snicker in the way no oh, snickers is on it never mind like there's some uh, pretty specific resistors in there and I didn't have the exact values and on the output filter there I didn't have the exact values so I you know if I was gonna build this thing and order the correct values well that's that let's hook it up and uh, hear what it sounds like okay moved it out here to my front room listening room the speakers and my little amplifier right there you can hear the buzz this is why you connect the turntable ground to your preamp that shuts it up okay we're all ready to roll here I don't know if these will give me a copyright strike or not, but we'll try anyway. Clicky Records. Keep advancing it so it doesn't home in on any music. Oh, of course. Guess who's got to come over? I don't know, it sounds fine to me. Try some other records here. Well, that's that. Works just fine. Well, I'm going to try one thing just for kicks. Turn the volume down. I wonder what happens if I take one of the batteries off. Don't try this at home, folks. It starts squealing. No more music. Let's put the uh, battery back on. Led Zeppelin. Squeak. Led Zeppelin. <laughs> 